I had no idea he was on his motorcycle that day. I was literally walking through the door whenever I got the call from my mom. Yeah, that's just something I never imagined, that like life would just kind of pause for a moment, stop. The first thing I heard was a woman on the other end saying, your husband's OK, but he's been in a motorcycle accident, and he's on his way to the hospital. Normally, when people say that, like, it's not really how it is. And you always hear about how like life can just go so fast, but I've never felt that until then. What if that was the last time that I hugged Dad or saw him leave and I didn't even really say bye? October 2nd, 2020. Rob Hull was riding home from a meeting in downtown Nashville when he was hit from behind by a truck and launched over the handlebars of his motorcycle. His head hit the pavement as his body skidded on the highway. His wife, Carrie, his son, Mason, and his daughter, MJ, rushed to the hospital, contacting family and friends for urgent prayer for his survival. We were texting all of the people that we knew just to pray for him, and we were praying for him on the way there because we had no idea how bad it was going to be or what to even expect. Through prayer, I've seen God work miracles, and we just needed prayer. We needed people to rally around us, and we needed to pray for Rob. Rob was taken to the nearest trauma hospital, fading in and out of consciousness. So with COVID restrictions, they only let mom in there to go see him. So that kind of felt like a slap in the face to just like be like, great, well, yeah, we're not going to hear anything until, you know, mom hopefully lets us know immediately. And that was a moment where I think me and my sister weren't scared of the intimacy of really praying together and with faith and boldness and expecting. I think that's something I'll always really appreciate looking back, was getting to share that with my sisters, that we had each other to pray together. They waited anxiously as emergency room staff took x-rays and a CT scan, concerned he may have a broken neck, cracked vertebrae, or a brain bleed. Still unsure of Rob's condition, Carrie cautiously approached her battered husband. I think that's when the fear started to set in was the minute I saw him in the bed and was almost afraid to walk any closer to see what I was going to see. I remember looking down and seeing his boots and his clothes on the ground, and they were shredded, like the boots were shredded. And that really hit me how, how bad it actually was. And then when I came up to the side of him, I could see all the road rash and everything on, on the whole right side of his body. Rob drifted in and out of consciousness while they waited for the results of the CT scan. Finally, Carrie was able to FaceTime MJ and Mason. The first thing that I saw was my dad sitting there with a neck brace on. He could barely talk and he was just like looking at us and it was scary, but it was, it was good to see that he was talking to us and he was there alive when probably shouldn't have been. It was such a deep breath of relief that was like, okay, he's conscious. But, uh, you know, so seeing someone you love in that state of just pain was just really hard to look at. After several hours, they received amazing news. Doctors determined that although Rob had suffered a traumatic brain injury, he was clear to go home that same night. I remember this nurse looking over my chart. She goes, well, we can't find any brain bleed. We can't find any cracked vertebrae. We can't find any broken bones. You are lucky. And I was laying there still in my neck brace on the table, you know, and I said, I'm not, this isn't luck. I'm blessed. This is, this is God with me, you know. <laughs> God was with me, I mean. There was no broken bones or internal bleeding. I just, I just knew, okay, God, God had him. I mean, God really protected him that day. It was just a miracle just knowing how bad it really could have been. And then just seeing my dad walk out of the hospital that night and hugging us and everything, like it was truly a miracle. I just remember just, deep appreciation for everything that I got to share with my dad and continue to get to share with my dad um, because of his recovery from the wreck. Just 
joyfulness that we get to still go on adventures, make things as creatives, and yeah, I mean, every time I see him, I just so, so, so thankful. Knowing that Rob could possibly not be here today is just, I mean, I'm so thankful and grateful that God spared his life that day. Rob made a full recovery, thankful for answered prayers in his family's desperate time of need. I'm thankful God spared me, I am. He could have taken me and, and called me home. I could have woken up in heaven and not known even what happened because as I woke up on the concrete, I didn't even know what had happened. So it could have been a transition uh, to heaven, but I'm thankful he spared me. The comfort of friends and family praying for us was huge. And then I was feeling the peace of the Holy Spirit, which I know came from the power of prayer. Yeah, there is power in prayer. And I don't know if recently you've been just doubting God and doubting the goodness of God and doubting the power of prayer and doubting if God even hears your prayers. And I hope today that as you watched that amazing story of Rob and the power of prayer, the power of his kids getting together and praying for him, the power of them reaching out to their faith community, friends, family, loved ones to pray for Rob and here they, the doctors suspect that there's a brain bleed, broken bones. And then next thing, hours later, the test results come back. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with him but a little bit of road rash and he's able to go home and be with his family and friends and live. I just hope and pray that that encourages, encourages you today to believe in prayer. There's power and prevailing prayer. And Andrew and I are gonna do just that. We're gonna pray for you, whatever your needs are. Just lift them up to the Father today, having faith in the name of Jesus. That's all you have to have faith in. You don't have to have even faith in the doctors or faith in the medicine. Have faith in Jesus because Jesus sits on the throne and he has authority over heaven and earth. He has authority over your body, the bodies of your loved ones who you're praying for, believe today. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but he also died on the cross to make us whole, to come against any infirmity, any disease, any doctor's report. Come against that today and have faith in the name of Jesus. Before we pray, we wanna read some amazing answer to prayers. This is another, uh, here's a good report that came in from YouTube. Alicia says, I had a lump on my breast and I claimed Jesus's healing over me. The next day it was gone. The same thing happened to my daughter. Jesus also healed her. He is the same today as he was then when he walked on earth. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. And here's another answer to prayer. I was having heartburn all the time. I could not sleep at night. On January 26th, I was watching the show and Terry said, put your hand on the area that needs healing. I placed my left hand over my heart and prayed and God healed me. I've been several months without heartburn. I don't know how God heals us. I just know he does. Amen to that. Yeah. As Ashley mentioned, we're gonna pray for you now. We count it a privilege to lift your needs before God. So let's do that now. Let's lift our needs. Father God, we humbly gather in your name, yet we pray with confidence that you hear us and care. And Father God, for those in the audience with needs, we lift them to you now. Somebody suffering from uh, horrific and terrifying nightmares and, and once you experience these dreams with, with such horror, you, you can't get back to sleep and you're fatigued the next day and you're living in torment. God is releasing you from those, those horrific nightmares now. In Jesus' name, that burden and that shackle, what's been happening to you at night is being released. Just raise your hands and rejoice. He's freeing you from that bondage in Jesus' name. Yeah, I believe someone's watching a woman. Uh, you've been diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis, and I believe God is touching you right now You've, you've been to the doctor, there are active lesions on your brain, and I believe God is healing those lesions. You will go back to the doctor, there will be no active lesions. You will not have any negative side effects because of this autoimmune disorder. God has authority over this, and it has been trying to set itself above the name of Jesus, 
And right now, we just rebuke MS in the name of Yeshua. And by the blood of Christ, you are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Just receive that today. Jesus. Someone else unable to um, take in breaths to a full capacity. It's almost like a pleurisy condition. I don't know if you've been diagnosed with that or just that's what it may be, but your lungs are not expanding without pain, and God is healing you of that now in Jesus' name. Someone else who is literally not able to keep their food down, their digestive uh, issues that have been going on, and Jesus is healing you of that. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I don't know if this is the same person with digestive issues, but I just heard something about your flora, your gut flora. Something is going on with your intestines, digestive system, whatever that is, you are being healed of that right now in Jesus' name. Just receive this, claim your healing, Believe it today because God sees you. He loves you. Whatever issues you've been dealing with, that, that was nailed on the cross. Just receive the healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time, and God bless.